new cost 108. In this commission, the Lord has enabled us to re, re, frame his revelations into courses so that when we start a course, you can participate and get trained and by the finished trading, and if you do a whole program, at the end of the day, you can receive the certificate, you know, in the particular order of the uh, uh, training that you participated in. So here we're doing kingdom economics. And, you know, in under the marketplace ministry, we're doing kingdom economics part three. I want to look at some key principles. We've done two parts to this kingdom economics. Today, I want you to listen. Elohim will raise and empower saints in the marketplace who will embrace training such as these, and at the end, they will operate and flourish based on some key principles. There are 12 of them or so we're going to give. Some of them are connected, and you build up on that. The whole idea is this. Marketplace ministry is not a secular occupation. It's not something to go there and do whatever you like. It is people who the Lord have apprehended. The Lord has apprehended them. They are disciples of Yeshua and ambassadors of the kingdom. It's just that they are theater of operation. The place where they serve him is not necessarily in the four walls of the church, but out there in the marketplace, and that includes you know, businesses, if you're a business owner who is a believer, if if you are in a, pro a professional like a doctor or an engineer or an architect or you are or a pharmacist or you are an employee in government, you're an employee in the public service and private sector or you're a public officer elected to office or appointed to office, the key thing is that not that you are doing those things, but you understand the operating principle and you embrace them, then you are marketplace minister. So what are the 12 key principles we're going to study today? Let us pray and receive them now. Father in heaven, have your way. You are beyond description. And we bow to you. We ask you to be glorified. Have your way and do that which only you can do in the life of your people. Release your word now. Grant us understanding. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen and amen. So principle number one is that those in the marketplace will be saints who acknowledge Elohim in his triple office as creator, as redeemer, and as owner. He owns us by creation. He owns us by redemption. He owns us by his providential care. And if it is so, it means that they will they acknowledge that they are bought with the precious blood of Yeshua and live because he lives. As a matter of fact, they are mere vessels in his hand. He fills them up and occupies them and he lives in them by his spirit. So, when he says in 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20, know what? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own. You are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your, in your body and in your spirit and which are God's. So what it means is that such people walk in consciousness that they are mobile temples of Holy Spirit. When you are going to walk, he is going with you. This is a serious assignment in the kingdom. Number two, for the above reason, they come first to a position of entire surrender to Elohim and consciously enthrone Yeshua as Lord of their lives. We've mentioned this a number of times in this training. He's not just a savior who will take them to heaven when they die. He is a Lord who determines how the marketplace people live on earth. You know, what they do in private, what they do in public, how they conduct their business is going to be according to his kingdom principles. So they make a covenant of sacrifice with the Lord. They live with renewed mindsets. They don't think the old way they used to think. They allow the word of the Lord to do something in their mind. And they begin to see things from heavenly perspectives. This is what Romans 12 says, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, 
but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove that which is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ. Another one says in the book of Philippians 2, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So we take our lives and lay on the altar. We allow the word of God to renew our minds. And as Psalm 50 verse 5 says, gather my sins together unto me, those who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. So those in the marketplace, knowing that the Lord owes by creation, by redemption, and by providential care, everything, they lay themselves at the altar. Their education, their stature, their investment, the money, they know that they do not own them. It's he who owns them. Number three, so these saints, therefore, dare not do anything or engage in any activity without the express instruction, direction, and guidance of Holy Spirit, who is the present manifestation of God in them. If he nudges them to pull out of any business, no matter how seemingly profitable, they obey, because he knows the way through the wilderness. He knows what lies ahead. They shun carnality and embrace through spirituality in the marketplace. So he guides them, he leads them. Romans 8 says from verse 5, They that after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that have the spirit, the things of the spirit. For the carnally minded is dead. If you live by what the newspaper say, or what the stock market is saying, you will miss the Lord and his plan. No, you look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporary. So Holy Spirit guides, Romans 8:14. He leads you into what to invest in, where to go in, when to move to another city. He knows where the Lord has ordained gold for you. So you're not hitting and missing. He is leading you. He is guiding you. It's such a smooth thing. Number four, when God by his Spirit lead in business, the professions, employment, in the corporate world, the civil service or public service or creative pursuit, all they do is as unto him and for his glory. They therefore will not engage in speech or sales speech or promotion or advertising which are remotely deceptive, misleading, or proud. You can't tell people something that is not true about your product if you're in the marketplace. You can't tell somebody to take something that will amount to poison, that will do damage to systems in the body. You cannot do that. You can't take a job where you're going to lie on behalf of the corporation. You're not going to be truthful. The standard of ethics, as we said before, Matthew chapter 5, is going to be higher than the ethical standard of the world. So, this is so important if it is leading. Colossians 3, 17 says, Whatever you do in word or in deed, do all in the name of the Lord Yeshua HaMashiach, giving thanks to God the Father by Him. Then verse 22, Servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleasers, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. And whatsoever you do, do it heartily, as to the Lord and not unto men, knowing that of the Lord he shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for you serve the Lord Jesus. But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he had done, and there is no respect of persons. Then number five, because Elohim God owns all, the people in the marketplace, because of that, these saints realize and accept the fact that they are mere channels for him to pass through his thoughts, his vision, for them to pass through his wealth and resources. They do not act or suggest that any of the assets or liabilities, I mean assets or abilities, came to them or are sustained by their own power, by their own intellect, by their superior knowledge. No. They realized the words that Moses told Israel in Deuteronomy chapter 8. He said, be careful and realize that it is God that gives you power to get wealth. You didn't get it by your ability. So 1 Corinthians 4, 7 makes another point. For who make thee to differ from another? And what hast thou that thou did not receive? If thou did receive it, why does thou glory as if thou did not receive it? So you cannot project yourself. You know, it's something that even Mark, even those in the pulpit are now doing. Every day, people are putting their Photoshop faces in your face to ask you to come to them 
because they preach nice sermon, they preach better than others. You don't do that in the kingdom. The kingdom, everything points to the master, points to the king. Like John the Baptist, you decreased for him to increase. So also those in the marketplace, everything they are doing is for his glory. So they do not project that they have known something. They, they are better than other people. You have a part to play. You play your part and play it as unto the Lord. Give him all the glory. Number six, kingdom marketplace ministers, therefore, are vessels who have accepted their election and roles as instruments through whom Elohim God, who owns all the earth and the fullness thereof, according to Psalm uh, 24, he will, they realize that, okay, I'm an agent in his hand to, for him to assign certain things to distribute or redistribute his enormous resources so that those who receive his goodness are drawn back to him. The kingdom marketplace ambassadorial model we are talking about is the hidden truth which only those who discover and walk in it stand any reasonable chance to be truly used by him in the end time as witnesses to the life, death, resurrection and return of Jesus to reign as king of the kingdom. You know the principle in Matthew 25, when the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him. He shall sit upon the throne, he shall set before him nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divided the sheep from the ghost. And then he said to his sheep on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of the Father, enter into the joy of your Father. You know, for, you know, I was sick, you visited me. I was naked, you clothed me, I was in prison, you visited me. And all those things he said, he said, why did you do it? When did we see you? He said, when you did it for one of these ones, even the least person in the kingdom, you did it for me. So the Lord is going to empower those in the marketplace to be instruments of receiving his unsurpassable resources. And they are not going to take it for their belly, but for assignment. And that is why they will be blessed people. Psalm 41 said something. Blessed is he that considered the poor. The Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. The Lord will preserve him and keep him alive. He shall be blessed upon the earth. Thou will deliver him unto the, thou will not deliver him unto the will of his enemies. The Lord will strengthen him upon his bed of the bed of languishing. Thou will make all his bed in his sickness. So these people, because they are open for the Lord to use them to touch lives, is going to bring him great glory. They are instruments for distributing his enemies' resources. That leads to principle number seven. Their willingness to serve the Lord and his church with the resources he gives them will diminish the extreme poverty that many Christians live under, which brings, which brings great reproach to the gospel all over the world. Because of policies the church embraced before without understanding, people thought that Poverty automatically meant holiness. People thought that, okay, the only way to please the Lord is if I'm just suffering abject lack. That twisted theology created a situation where many individuals and many ministries and congregations do not have the capacity to do anything the Lord gave them to do. The vision of the Lord, they don't have the capacity. Men and brethren, so... The Lord is raising people who will break out of those jaded theologies and understand that there are people the Lord will call to be in the marketplace and they will leave the pulpit alone and they will take it seriously, dedicate it to the Lord and use it to serve him. And the Lord will commit into their hand resources to be able to be sons of consolation who support others. You know, in Acts chapter 2 from verse 4 to 1, they that gladly received the word were baptized. The same day, they were added unto them about 3,000 souls. I mean, this is so interesting. In the Old Testament, the day the Old Covenant was given, the Torah was given, 3,000 souls died. 3,000. The day the New Covenant was sealed with the coming of the Holy Spirit, 3,000 were you know, came into the kingdom. One was a covenant that led to death, was a covenant that leads to life. 3,000. And what happened to them? 3,000 suddenly 
from 120 people, 3,000 joining. That's animal's pressure for finance to take care of them. But what was the secret? Verse 42. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, and in breaking of bread, and in prayer. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together, and had all things common. And sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as everyone has need. People had different needs. So people brought the five fingers are not equal. Some are big, some are thick, some are long, some are tall, some are short. And when you bring in resources this way, there's enough for everybody. Elohim has enough for the need of his people. Not enough for the agreed. And if we realize these things those in the marketplace will not you will regard the business as if it's your own no god owes your business i remember a man called stanley town i think what well, his book can be found here this man was a man who you know loved the lord he learned to tithe his normal tithe the lord was blessing he increased it to 20 percent increased 30 percent 40 at this stage he said what a minute what am i doing you know what he did he decided to say, God, today, you own this business. You own it entirely. You tell me what to do with the profit. Boom. He became a multi-billionaire. Men and brethren, we need to understand these things. It helps make a difference. In Acts, 40, in Acts chapter 4, from verse 32, the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul, Neither said any of them that aught of the things which he possessed was his own, but they that had, but they had all things common, and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Yeshua, and great grace was upon them all. Neither was there any among them that lacked, for as many as were possessors of lands and houses sold them and brought the price of the things that they were sold and lay them down at the apostles' feet, and distribution was made unto every man according as everyone has need. And Joseph, who by the apostles was so named Barnabas, which is being interpreted the son of consolation, a Levite, and of the country of Cyprus, having land, sold it, and brought the money, laid it at the apostles' feet. The Lord wants to raise more sons of consolation in various ministries, fellowships, and local assemblies so that the reproach in the name on the church will be taken away. You know, there's reproach when people cannot pay their basic bills. I'm not talking about luxuries like holiday. I'm talking about food. They, they can't put food. They go to food bank and the food bank is all they have. Is, all that is left is just a tin of baked beans, a family of three or four. No, men and brethren. This is happening because we do not understand the principle of the marketplace and there are not enough people who are in business, in ministry, in professions, knowing that the Lord owns them and the Lord wants to use them to do many things. And if you are being stirred by this word and you are saying to the Lord, yes, Lord, I want to be a son or a daughter of consolation, the Lord hears your cry, the Lord hears the groaning of your heart, he will make it possible. Number eight, this culture of practical love and care will defy sins. It will spoil revival. It will bring cohesion and unity, leading to stronger local congregations and ministries with greater capacity to be a witness for Yeshua within their spheres of influence. John 13, 34, 35, a new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you, and you love one another. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you have loved one for another. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it's so important that we know that when these things are practiced, the love of the Lord flows. It brings edification. And unity is made more possible. If you check the story of the early church, Acts chapter 6, when the apostles saw reason to release the deaconess to do the work, you know, of distributing the welfare of all, the Bible records in verse 7 that, you know what? The, the word of Elohim increased, and the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly, and a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. 
Whenever you see welfare programs put in place and the God's people being taken care of, those who have more bring in, those who have less, you know, receive, and there's an equality in the, the way the Lord does it. When you have that spirit, He's not asking us today to go and sell your uh, clothes and your business and bring it all. No, He's asking you to dedicate that asset. Dedicate it to him. Because if you go and sell it all and bring it, like in those days, what happens after, you know, the church finishes that resource? So there's a superior way. The superior way is to dedicate that business, that profession, whatever you do, dedicate it to the Lord. And he who gave you the strength, he who gave you the resource, he leads you as to how to spend it, how to utilize it. And you cannot be there and somebody is groaning and suffering in the same assembly. Somebody didn't, doesn't have food to eat tonight. And somebody has more than enough. More than enough for years stacked up. And you are looking at the green in your account and you are excited and excited at the money increasing. Something is wrong with that. Then number nine principle. Majority of human beings will never go into any church building until Yeshua returns. The plan of Elohim, therefore, is to reach them where they are. And as they engage in normal daily economic activities, banks, shopping malls, construction sites, schools, conferences, and a host of other regular activities, you know, there, the plan of the Lord is that as they are there, they will encounter living temples of Elohim, saints who are in the marketplace, whose posture is go ye, not come here like the pulpit ministers, and they, as they encounter them, they're going to feel the presence of the Lord, because the kingdom is within. Luke 17, 21, neither say they, lo, here, or lo, there, behold, the kingdom of Elohim is within you. And Romans 14, 17 to 19 says, for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but it is righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. For he that in these things served Christ is acceptable to God and approved of men. And so when people begin to walk in the consciousness of the kingdom of Yeshua's king within, the power of Elohim that comes into them by Holy Spirit, it enables them to go from Jerusalem to Judea to Samaria to uttermost parts of the earth. And as they come in contact with people where they are, the power of the Lord flows to them. I mean, the, the, the presence of the Lord, virtue is manifested. That's what makes marketplace so powerful because they are in contact with everyday people every day. And they want to know, why are you so cool? Why are you so quiet? All these cost of living crisis, everybody is agitated, confused, troubled, speaking against the prime minister, speaking against the chancellor of the exchequer, and you are not doing what they are doing. They want to know, as First Peter three fifteen says, "Be sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks it to a reason for the hope of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear." There's something about righteousness that attracts people. And as you go ye, you're going to come to cut out people. That leads to number 10, another important point. Kingdom marketplace ministers, because they walk in alignment with the will of God, they will become mighty instruments of activating the supernatural. Elohim has an inherent interest in using those who obey him, who love him, and who love other people. He wants to use them as pure vessels to do mighty signs and wonders. Signs and wonders is not only inside the temple when you meet the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist. No, signs and wonders can be done anywhere and everywhere. In Mark 16, verse 20, he said, they went forth everywhere. The Lord walking with them, signs and wonders following them. Brothers, sisters, that's what the Lord wants to do with those in the marketplace. That the Lord can do healing, deliverance, mighty, mighty revelation, you know, prophetic utterance, word of wisdom, word of knowledge can take place within the context of ministry in the marketplace. Your business, your workplace, your professional activity. As long as the, you, uh, the brethren are holy unto them, humble before him and are accessible and others can reach them, Joel 2, 28, 29 is going to be fulfilled in our time. The day of Pentecost was the early rain, the former rain. And there's going to be a latter rain. 
Yes, we thank the Lord for Azusa Street. It was also a former rain. There's going to be a latter rain where you see a doctor attending to people, and by word of knowledge, you know right where the problem is. He will, by discernment, you know right where the problem is, and you'll be able to minister to the person just there without needing to put him under the table, under the hammer, and, and do some surgery that is not necessary. And this applies to all other professions too. Number 11, the wealth of the nations, therefore, will gravitate towards these saints who are living a pieces of Yeshua, Jesus, their Savior. Instead of rehearsing dry dogmas and engaging theological disputations, they will be used by him to show for the blessed kingdom on a day-to-day -day basis. They will not stuff up the wealth for themselves or stack them up in bank accounts for many generations unborn. They would rather deploy the wealth to good causes at local level in their communities, at regional, you know, in a county, a state, a county levels, state levels in their regions, at national levels, international levels. They will do that, you know, man. And this will lead to the largest harvest of souls. They will sponsor poor students in universities and just out of love of the Lord. They'll do that. You know, the Bad Day Fundraiser of Pastor Grace is sponsoring 10 young people in school right now. In one of the countries the Lord showed her. And brothers and sisters, they're going to give scholarship to people, build houses for widows. I remember when the Manzanenses of Zimbabwe, when they were in Zambia, you know, on behalf of the Global Missions Board, built a toilet and a, a hut for an old widow who didn't have anything. They will sponsor production of Bibles and literature for distribution worldwide. They will be used of the Lord to sponsor pulpit bound fivefold and those called to evangelical missions. And men and brethren, this is going to be awesome. They're going to touch the world because they obey God and the Lord uses them as channels to bring increase. Brothers and sisters, the Lord is about to unfold a massive project that will touch Africa. The Lord is basically directed that. I know there are things we're doing. Let Brother Love continue. You know, International Missions Fellowship is doing in Asia, Africa. But there's going to be something the Lord says. All African souls in the diaspora who are in Europe and America, that through that channel, they're going to touch the continent in a very definite way. Brothers and sisters, the gospel of the kingdom, Matthew 24, 14, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, then shall the end come. Witness includes people seeing the goodness of the Father, seeing it in a definite way, in communities, in localities, in cities, in states. And that is what will lead to discipling of the nations. Number 12, for this reason, many called to the marketplace will also be called to powerful pulpit and missionary assignment. This is what is called hybrid ministry. You are in the marketplace, you are in the business, you are a trader, or you have a business, or you are industrialist, or you, know, you are a, a professional, you are in employment. Marketplace ministry when you're in any of these, the Lord also gives you the ability to preach and teach the world, to make disciples. You are combining two things, both pulpit ministry and marketplace ministry is called hybrid. And so the Lord is going to raise a lot of people in the marketplace in hybrid ministry. It's not going to be like before. Oh, my job is, I'm just, get, I'm just in business. Please go meet the pastor, all that. No, the Lord will give a capacity to be like in the days of David, those who restored the kingdom to David. They could haul, they could haul instruments of war with the right hand and with the left hand. They were ambidextrous. And the Lord is going to raise a lot of people who are spiritually ambidextrous. They are in the marketplace. They also can do pulpit work. You know what? Men and brethren, why is he going to do so? It is important to understand that there are many nations that have ideological cultural or religious iron walls that they've erected around their people you can't go through either because of religion or culture or ideology and if you ever apply for visa to do and do missionary work to go and plant a church to do anything that resembles preaching they're going to turn you down they're not going to give you visa for any reason under the sun 
But the same countries, if a doctor says, hey, I want to come and see your country and see, I have a, a vacation. I want to use my one month in the, in, in the country and support whoever local doctors around, they give them visa. Oh, you know, you're a business person. I want to come and see the investment opportunities in your nation, whether I can invest, and that is true. You have that in mind. They open door, give you visa. In other words, there are professionals who can go beyond border with the power of Holy Spirit working in them. Where the pastor, where the fivefold cannot go into, the Lord can cause them to go across such places and the favor of the Lord with them, the glory of the Lord upon them. And these things are possible because he said in Acts 1, 8, you shall receive power. After the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. So the marketplace has a huge responsibility. And brother, the next lesson we're going to go into some areas like the fivefold application in the marketplace ministry and other things. And this week we're going to finish and I urge you to pay attention. Please distribute this video, share it extensively and tell people come and get a training. Come and get training. Even if you are not doing the other courses we're doing and you're in the marketplace, get this training. You know, each lesson is just about 30 to 35 minutes. The maximum is 40 minutes. Come and get your training and become a true marketplace minister and ambassador of the kingdom right where you are. By way of assignment, just one second. Well, I appreciate if you can share the video with friends and relatives. Then assignment, out of the 12 key principles of modern, I mean of kingdom economics, please briefly discuss any seven out of the 12. Two, which one did you learn something unique, something particular? Let's pray. Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let this word be a fruit in Yeshua's name. Amen. Thank you so much for being with us on this program and watching and we believe you learned something and the Lord bless you. Now it's time to connect with us on our social media platforms. We have a daily live stream on Facebook Monday all the way to Sunday every day by about 10.30 a.m. UK time and that's the same at Nigerian time and you, it's either Apostle George Monday to Friday uh, to Thursday, Pastor Grace uh, Friday to Sunday and then in the evening of Sunday we have two sessions from 5.30 to about 6 after 6 another one up to 7 so please join us on the live stream and you're going to enjoy it we also visit our website www.gsom.ac to download free ebooks this course you just listened to all these lessons you know there's an ebook we have free of charge. Everything we do is free. But more importantly, you can actually do your program on, you know, ebooks. You can do your program entirely on ebooks and with this video or anyone you want. You can also, if you want to do the yes course or be, do the master class, you can go to www.kingdomboostclub.com and you can subscribe so that you can do it. You can also subscribe to our channels. This YouTube gsom.tv and we also have a telegram channel gsom media you can send us an email at aklife.tv at gmail.com we love you dearly and we want to partner with you to make sure that the body of yeshua jesus is empowered with truth remember it is the teach train equip activate and release paradigm absolutely free of charge have a blessed day and we'll see you again soon.